Yo, you already see what it is, man. It's that boy Punch, that new face, new money. It's this50.com. I got my guy with me. What's going on, Tristan Walker? <laughs> That's elite stuff, man. <laughs> Bang! This is Tristan Walker, CEO of Walker Company Brands, and you're watching this is 50.com. Tristan Walker, some people's gonna look on here and be like, where's your mixtape? They're gonna say, where's your album? Who we got features with? Who are you for the people that don't know? I'm gonna start off slow, yeah. Yeah, so I'm Tristan. I'm from Queens, New York, born and raised. Mm -hmm. uh, I started this company, Walker and Company Brands. We're a family of brands, and we specifically focus on designing health and beauty solutions for people of color. Full stop, 100%. And you know, we started this company about three years ago. We raised over $30 million in funding. Uh, and our goal is just to build something that people can be proud of, build products that work, people love, uh, and just innovate, man, in ways that other companies haven't so far. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we hear key words in that phrase. You said $30 million, <laughs> which means you're doing damn successful. No, that's not my personal bank. That's my company's bank. Look, it's cool, good. man. <laughs> yeah. If a young black guy's around $30 million, maybe look, maybe that, that's $2 million that just fell on the floor. I got it right here. It's not that easy. I get it right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But listen, um, I know a lot about you. And, and, the, and there's many, many things that intrigue me about you, all jokes aside. And outside of the, the obvious that you're young and black, you saw something that was a flaw in the game. Yeah. And you said, I'm gonna correct that. Yeah, man, look, so we live out in Silicon Valley right now. When I started the company, I was like, all right, there's two views of the world that I have that I think few people in the world understand. The first is this idea that like all black culture leads all global culture, right? You think food, music, dance, et cetera. And my biggest frustration is living in the earliest adopting region in the world, Silicon Valley, and it knows nothing about the earliest adopting culture. Like that whole discord doesn't make any sense to me. Jeez. The second view of the world that I had pertaining to all these health and beauty companies, right? I think they're all doomed for all types of business model and structure reasons. But I always talk about this experience <laughs> of going to like any retailer, having to go to aisle 16. It's the ethnic beauty aisle, right? Mm -hmm. Which is like, it's crazy because it's like the ethnic beauty aisle next to the beauty aisle, right? So yeah. that's, that's the first mistake. Uh, but the second thing is, it's not really an aisle because it's a shelf. And usually it's a shelf in the back, like right hand corner. Mm -hmm. Then I have to reach to the bottom of that shelf for a package that's dirty. And then there's a photo on it of like a 65 year old bald black dude in the Jerry Curl drinking a cognac, petting a snake, tiger, whatever. With a it pipe. Is. It's crazy, right? <laughs> And like, that's, that's nuts to me, that whole second class citizen experience, particularly considering how much money we spend on that stuff, how culturally influential we are, and you loop in Latino Asian consumers, we're the majority of this country in 20, 30 years. And right now we're the majority of the world. So it's crazy to me that no one's tried to innovate at all. And that was our opportunity to put those two views of the world together to build something pretty special. Let's pull <laughs> it back. You're from Queens. Yeah. And right. you found your way to Stanford. Yeah, man. So, you know, I was Tell from, us about that path. Yeah, that's a about, huge jump. Yeah. So I'm born and raised or born Southside Jamaica, Queens, 40 projects. Uh, I lived there until I was like seven, eight, and then moved out to Flushing, Latimer Projects, my family's still there. Um, and you know, I had this one goal in life, and it was to get as wealthy as possible as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. right? I realized that there are three ways to do it. The first was to be an actor or an athlete. That didn't work out for me too well. The second way was to work on Wall Street. I did that for like two years, hated it. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is the worst experience of my life. I'm never doing this again. And I was like, shit, like, I've already exhausted two of the three. The last one was entrepreneurship. Yeah. And the day I came to that realization, I was like, man, like I want to get as far away, literally and figuratively from Wall Street as possible. Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, there's a school called Stanford by the Pacific Ocean, let me yeah. apply. Crazy. Fortunately, I got in. And then when I got there, I realized Silicon Valley existed. I realized Stanford was about entrepreneurship. Uh, and the rest is history. That first year, I got to work full-time at Twitter when there were about 20 people at the company. Yeah, you're going yeah. fast. Easy, yeah, easy, yeah. easy, easy, easy. <laughs> it's a lot, easy. lot to tell. So then, now we dive into it. We have walk-in company. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the shining star would be Bevel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just our first brand. We're going to make a whole bunch of brands over the years, but mm -hmm. Bevel is our first brand. So let's talk about it. Let's dive yeah, straight in. Yeah. Um, Bevel is extremely essential to just having a better life and doing smarter things with our skin and our face. Yeah, I mean. I guess diving from your angle to describe it to them. Yeah, look, I mean, a lot of people look at our brand, at least Bevel, and they're like, yeah, this is a shaming company, right? But it's more than that, right? Yeah. Bevel is, you know, brand designing, grooming services and products specifically aimed at like fixing the shaving irritation issue that people have, right? Yeah. Uh, so for 14 years, you know, going to boarding school, I didn't have a barber nearby. I had to teach myself how to cut my hair, how to like shave. Yeah. And I always had this experience. And I was like 14 years old. You go to the retail store and you start to grow this peach fuzz on your face. You get the razor, you get the gel, you shave that night, like you ready, right? You wake up the following morning, pizza face, crazy, done, right? Yeah. And I was like, at that point, I wrote off razors for the rest of my life. 
uh, and then I had to use this depilatory cream, right, that you put on your face for like six to eight minutes. It stinks up your bathroom, burns your face, discolors yeah. your skin. Yeah. But you don't have to use a razor, you just wipe it off. And I was like, these are the things that we have to use and nobody for like 100 years has tried to figure this out. That's mm -hmm. crazy to me, right? So in January of 2013, you know, I was speaking to an old retired like packaged goods executive. Yeah. Just like, man, like I've wanted to shave forever. I don't know what to use, what should I do? And he said one thing that stuck with me. He said, Tristan, look at photos of black men 100, 150 years ago. None of them had razor bumps on their faces. Like, none crazy. Of them. I, I, thought I he was heard being, you say to someone. Yeah. yeah, I thought he was being crazy about it. So I went on Flickr and I identified these search terms like black men in the 1920s, Harlem Renaissance, all that stuff. I went through 1,200 photos and found one uh, with like razor bumps or anything on his face. Yeah. But more on that in a bit. The second thing that I would do, I'd go to these. Um, these stores that sell these like very premium shaving products, right? Yeah. Uh, you can probably name them off the top of your head. I don't want to get sued or anything. But yeah. like here, here's the situation. We're not gonna give them time today, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is your spotlight. Nah, but like here, here's how it works out, right? So you walk in, and every time I go into the city with the store, I ask the sales rep, I'm like, listen, I've had to deal with this issue my whole life. What should I use? Mm -hmm. And they have every incentive in the world to take me to like these $300 razors that are multi-blade, like all that stuff, right? They've never done it. They've always taken me to off-brand single blade safety razors, right? And the research goes, this whole industry started in 1904. There's this guy, uh, his name is King Gillette. He had this amazing insight. That's he's, real King Gillette? Yeah, that was his name. <laughs> he's connected to the Gillette now? Yeah, it's like, that started in 1904. <laughs> what was my grandfather doing in 1904? <laughs> yeah. Shit, yeah. man, continue, yeah, man. Yeah, so, I mean, the story goes, um, you know, he had this insight, uh, you know, the straight razor can actually have a lot of efficacy for your face, right? Like, you know, but barbers have been using it for all these years, but it's hard for you to use yourself at home if you're not trained. Yeah. So he had this amazing insight, and I give them all the credit in the world, where they were like, what if you can take the single blade, house it within the safe head, attach a handle to it, take it home with you and shave. Yeah. Right? Now, here's what other people would say about the story. You kind of say whatever you want about it or believe whatever you want. Usually when you get the patent for something, it, that patent runs out, right? Uh, and many would argue that uh, the only reason we have like two, three, four, five, six blade razors today is due to patent protection because you can maintain your margins and that sort of thing. Yeah. But actually, if you you know travel internationally or even domestically for people that have this issue, it's the best thing to use. And here's why: a single blade usually cuts the hair level with the skin, not beneath, like some multi-blade razors do. So we have curly hair. What's that going to do? Grow in your face if you use that, right? And then it's also one clean cut, so there's no pulling or tugging. So if we have that sensitive skin, you don't want that, right? Yeah. Um, so that's why we decided to make an entire system, not only with the razor, the single blade safety razor, pre-shave oil, shave cream, restoring balm, all of which have ingredients to help fix this issue. And we have a clinically tested solution to fix it, right? Now think about this. It's a problem that's been around for like 100 years. Nobody's tried to solve it. We've done it, right? And that's just the first product. The second one is this trimmer. But man, like we're gonna just keep pushing, pushing, pushing and really eliminate this issue for people over time. This is crazy. Yeah. So while y'all listening to all of that, that's how you make $30 million. <laughs> I mean, this it's is a little genius. harder than that. I mean, but <laughs> yeah. it's amazing, bro, because yeah. you've been able to really take a simplistic idea and refine it so uniquely yeah. and really just make a, like a master design. Yeah. I want to dig back into Queens for a moment. Yeah, yeah. What's the influence with Nas? Yeah, so, um, you know, Nas is my first investor in the company. Mm -hmm. So I, I had introduced um, kind of Steve Stout, who used to be his manager, mm -hmm. uh, to one of my investors. Translation. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, through that, uh, Steve had introduced Nas to the venture capital firm that I was a part of. Uh, and there, like, I was one of the first pitches he saw, right? And he got it right away. I mean, everybody knows Nas, his haircuts, the half moon, all that stuff. Yeah. And I was like, if I'm going to have anybody, like, I want Nas in. And he was the first money in. I mean, uh, the, to, to end it, Tristan, do you, I mean, this is a heavy question. Yeah. Do you feel like you're legendary at this point? Because what you're doing, outside of the invention, you being a 31-year-old black man from New York City, are you legendary? I don't think I'm legendary yet. I, I think the legendary people are the people who do what they say they're going to do. Like, I want to build a company that's still around 150 years from now. And then you right? become. So if people will get asked that question 150 years from now. Hopefully they say that, right? But like we still have some work to do. I get it. Uh, we're just getting started. This is page one, chapter one. It's like the forward, yeah. right? Um, so yeah, I don't think I'm legendary. I'm just doing the good work. It's my duty to do the good work. And as long as we continue to do things that make people proud of our work, yeah. 
then like if that legend becomes a legend, it is what it is. But like that's not my goal. My goal is just make dope great stuff. product. That's it. You know what my goal is right now? To get in chapter one. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's it. We got you. But I love it, man. <laughs> it's punch this 50com My guy Trishan Walker. This is good. Let me y'all don't let me tell you what which I gotta understand. This feels good to be around success. Yo, mom, you see this kind of shit, mom? 